let us continue then uh, our discussion of um, what is politics. Moving on, transitioning from our section on political philosophy, which we have concluded uh, with the paper and the discussion of Augustine Aquinas and Machiavelli, and moving into uh, what I called uh, the modern democracies as a model, but basically into modernity. Um, we will start this by discussing, by using actually, Thomas Hobbes and John Locke, sort of a transition then from political philosophy to uh, the next section, the next section on modern political systems. In the next section, we will look at some of the central assumptions that underlie the world, the political world as we know it. Uh, we look at the map and we see that uh, it's uh, divided into patches of different colors with nicely drawn borders. This is a very recent invention, this sort of a view of the world, because these patches that uh, we call uh, countries, or erroneously nations, or more correctly states, the way we have them now on the map are actually very, very recent inventions, and I'm not sure how long they will last as a tool of organizing politically, as you will see. So we think we live in a world of nicely divided little uh, spots, but that's actually not really so. Uh, but to get there, to get to this idea that, okay, that we have states nicely divided, which we call sovereignty, um, that we have nation states and so on, to get there, um, we will transition, as I said, through a discussion of uh, Hobbes and Locke. This is a transition actually from uh, our discussion of political philosophy into a different subfield of political science. There are four major subfields of political science, the way they are practiced in the United States, not everywhere in the world, by the way. Uh, one is political philosophy, the other one is comparative politics, then we have American government, and then finally international relations. And all these four subfields we will actually deal with during the quarter. We, I'm, I'm going to give you more on all these, each of these subfields. But our transitioning from the first section to the next is, a, is also a transition uh, that is from political philosophy to comparative politics slash American government, because we will compare different political systems as they are done in different, in different states, and we will acquire some of the key tools, key vocabulary of contemporary political science. This is just to give you a sense. And notice that we're transitioning from political philosophy to comparative politics, including American government. We're also transitioning historically from, we started with the ancients, Middle Ages, early modernity, today with Hobbes and next with Locke, to modernity. So it's historical. We're going also to the subfields, and we're also going to the questions that we are asking. <coughs> so let, let's let's take the first one, the first uh, one of the two that two thinkers that I uh, that we will discuss briefly, Thomas Hobbes. Now, Thomas Hobbes lived during what is probably the most turbulent century, uh, or one of the most turbulent centuries in the history of the United Kingdom of of England, rather. Uh, he lived in uh, the 17th century, 1600s, which was the age of great uh, turmoil. It was the age of civil war in England on the British Isles. It was the age of um, uh, revolution and civil war. Now, British history is known, is well known for being uh, gradual. It, it, it's not replete as French history is with. Uh, revolution and bloodshed and this and that. It's, it's more organic. The development seems to be more organic. However, we can only look at it that way and we assume it is that way if we ignore this century. Actually, it's the history after this 17th century that is more gradual, but it, it took about 100 years of really grave turmoil. So that, why is this important? Well, think about it. Thucydides lived in a time of war, in the time of Greek civil states continuously at war, a time of, a time of deep insecurity, right, where, where, where violence was all around. You see that in the Milan Dialogue. Machiavelli lived 
on an Italian peninsula that is, was divided into city-states, right? Uh, divided, but actually populated with city-states. And they themselves, again, uh, were uh, at war with themselves sometimes, with different factions vying for control, just like with Florence in the Machiavelli's case, or between themselves. So it's time of insecurity and continued uh, conflict. So you see the parallel. Well, guess what? You will see some of the conclusions that Hobbes draws, although centuries later, right, she, he was born in, in, born in 1588, <coughs> died in 1679. So centuries later, uh, or millennia later compared to the cities, but the human experience is the same. The human experience is the same. And we all start judging reality from, from what we learn about reality through the society, the culture in which we, we, we grow up. But the human nature is the same. So you will have similar reactions. So that's the context in which uh, Hobbes, Hobbes worked uh, a turbulent century of uh, civil war of a parliament fighting the monarch. So uh, civil war is so um, brutal. And this is why it leaves such marks, because in civil war, unlike in a war with a different political entity, there are no borders, really, between the enemies. That's the tragic part. Uh, in civil war, the true civil war, which is not necessarily between two parts of the country, uh, in true civil war, you don't know who is your enemy, who is your, uh, who is your friend, basically, right? Because you don't know which side they are. And there are no clear entities to protect you from the other entity, right? In a civil war, it's society as war it, it, with itself within the same political unit. That's unit. That's the true civil war. Like, uh, the American Civil War is, is something more complex because they already formed two different political entities. But even then, right, the borders were porous, and we all know that it was the war with the highest number of casualties in U.S. history still. So let's, uh, that's one thing. Hobbes lives in the time of civil war. The other thing that happens is that he is still within or after Christianity, right? This is still in the sense. In what sense? Again, I'm, I'm mentioning Christianity. I'm talking about our perspective of the world. For example, the fact that we think, right? I talk, we talk about this, that there is a linear history, right? We think. Uh, that there is a linear history, that's something that can only happen